Alright friends, here we are back again, getting ready to begin a new story mode playthrough of Wintermute. There are supposed to be five chapters, so far there are three episodes, and I've already played the first three. <clears throat> Hopefully by the time we finish these first three, the fourth one will be ready. The first one, do not go gentle. The second one, illuminates fugue. And the third is crossroads elegy. I gotta turn this audio down. Blasting my eardrums out here. Okay. Sorry about that. So, episode one Do Not Go Gentle. Mackenzie and Dr. Greenwood. Is that Mackenzie's last name? Or is Mackenzie Mackenzie? Yeah, Will Mackenzie. So, wait a minute. She wears. Dr. Greenwood are separated after their plane crashes deep in northern Canadian wilderness. Struggling to survive, Mackenzie explores the small town of Milton, where he begins to understand the scope of this quiet apocalypse. Dr. Greenwood, now is that her maiden name? Because, well, as we will see when we begin, she wears a wedding ring and um, well if his last name's McKenzie and they were married wouldn't she be Dr. McKenzie apparently after they I don't know if they divorced maybe they just separated because she's still wearing her wedding ring and so maybe she just took her maiden name after they separated and they're not legally divorced However, at the beginning of this episode, there is some copyrighted music from a band called First Aid, and the song is called Lion's Roar. I was going to mute it, but doing some research, that's why it's taken so long for this to come out, I have found out that YouTube will automatically insert copyrighted uh, licenses. That YouTube gets licenses for certain music and it automatically, if it hears it in a video, they will put the license in the description with all the links to the music and who owns it and all that stuff. So I'm not going to do that and hopefully uh, we do not get zapped for it or I'll have to do another video from the beginning. Let's go. Sounds like there's a bear out there. Let's go.
The Joker. Seems about right. Yep. All right. When we last left off, we were dead. Another record cold snap on the way. Let's see if we can't make sure the pipes don't freeze. Pipes freeze up again. Need some matches. Okay, I have played this once before, the first three chapters, episodes, I'll probably continually say chapters or stories or whatever, but the first three episodes I've already played, and when they added the, uh, the third episode, there were some changes to the first two that uh, I actually hadn't replayed after the changes. So we will be ex Bear Island. Dad used to fly there all the time. So he said it used to be beautiful. So we'll be experiencing sure those changes together since the quakes and all. Well, here we are, old girl. Your best flights may be behind you, but you're still beautiful to me. And anyways, you're all I've got. I'd sure love to give you one last great adventure. She may be all you got, and you love her to bits, but you didn't care to sand any of this and to repaint it. I mean, throw at least a... spray some rust coating on it. I don't remember needing my parka this early in the season. It seems to get colder every year. I never could find out what that white dot is for. <sighs> Cheap electric crap. Never works when you need it. We could take all this stuff right now, but there's no use... right pipes froze up again getting pretty late in the day I guess I could take a nap Those were better days. Still has a picture of Astrid there. <laughs> Is it? Who could that be? That's what I want to know. You read my mind. Jackrabbit Remote Transport, Mackenzie speaking. I told her not to come up. I told her you couldn't fly in this weather. For once, we could not be so damn... Whoa, well, well, slow down, Morgan. What are you talking about? She just showed up. Said you'd see her. Said you'd fly her north. I know where you need the money. The weather service... It's okay, Morgan. I've got it from here. Uh... from you since I know I know and I wouldn't be here if it weren't important well what brings you I mean are you sick <laughs> no no not me but I need to get to someone who is right so you're still a doctor yes I'm still a doctor well, I thought that after why are you here? I need your help. There's an isolated community in the northern part of Great Bear. Someone there is very sick. Great and... Bear? There's nothing there anymore. 
not since... I know. But I have to get there. Still trying to save the world, huh? Somebody has to. What's that supposed to mean? Mackenzie... Uh, Will... I didn't come here to fight about the past. I need a pilot to take me somewhere remote. Someone who won't ask too many questions. Someone I can trust. Wait, questions? Astrid, are you in trouble? Are you gonna help me, or not? What's in the case? See, there's that thing about no questions, remember? What's in the case, Astrid? No questions. Look, the weather out there is bad. Bad. When it's getting worse. You walk in here after years. I could have been dead. You could have been. And then you show up and you want me to just risk my life flying into the middle of the great northern nowhere to deliver you in some mystery metal cage to some remote wilderness outpost. All because you walked in here and asked me to? Yes. Astrid, you can't bring him back. This isn't about that. I know how hard it's been. No. You don't know, Mackenzie. You don't know anything. You don't think I feel it, too? Are you gonna take me or not? The longer I wait, the worse it'll get. Damn it. Look, I don't have time for this. Wait. The worse what will get? Why do I have a feeling you're not talking about the weather? Because I'm not... Throw your bags in the plane. I'll get started on pre-flight. Better buckle up tight, because it's going to be a rough ride. Let's see. Two people, plus enough fuel to get us out to Great Bear and back leaves. Hmm. Almost no capacity for cargo. If we're too heavy, we'll burn through our fuel before we get there. I'll have to be careful about what else I take with me. The mysterious Kate. Astrid's traveling pretty light. Wherever she's going, she must not be planning to stay long. Ah, doesn't want to pick up his coat. Water, energy bars. Pure Eleven bars. pounds. Breakfast. Astrid's a doctor. So eleven pounds. The distress pistol kit is. Eleven here. pounds. Everything's eleven pounds. End up in an emergency situation without it. I think we only have eleven pounds left of this. I have some. Stuff I need to move off the screen, it's blocking some things, so. Sorry about that. Got to get things set up for this. I thought I had it done already, but apparently I didn't take that weight into consideration there. Okay. We can carry 56 pounds here, so that means I can take two more items. I'm not going to take that. Let's take this and this. I think I should be able to get that. Just oh, need to grab my park that was me. my weight. Never mind. <laughs> Oops. Okay, where's the weight limit on this? Exactly where I moved the stuff to. So we could carry 33. So the food? No. I'd rather have the medical stuff. Because we're going to be injured. Ah, there will be cloth there. We'll take the food. All right. Let's get the coat and get out of here.
out and take it off. I wear mine too. Why? Memories, I guess. I thought you wanted to forget. Not all of it. Look. I, I should have looked for you. It's okay. I've kept busy. I've moved on. You sure? Because this all seems pretty familiar. You still working with that researcher, doctor? What's his name? No. No, I'm not working at the center anymore. Where? I'm working on my own. Freelance, you could say. Freelance doctor? That sounds legit. I don't question your life choices, Mackenzie. Plenty of things you could be doing besides hanging out in your dad's old plane and drinking in the daytime. Hey, we had a lot of good times in this plane. And it's under control. I know, okay? I'm not here to fight, really. All right, we can finally start playing this game now. Astrid. After 16, 17 minutes. Astrid. I must have gone right through the windshield. Trees broke my fall. Oh, mostly. Stop that bleeding. Stop that blood loss. Yeah. I wonder if they fixed the uh cold is making my head feel thick. Don't worry about it. That's not us just talking about the cold. I wonder if they fixed where you could get warm from this fire. Nope. But I guarantee you, if you step in it, you'll get burnt. Look, we're standing right next to the fire, and there's three down arrows. I think that's the dumbest shit. I can't believe that they did that. But I understand why they did it. Because if you don't follow the tutorial by building a fire and getting warm, then you don't learn how to do it, apparently. Even though that's one of the first things you do when the story mode starts, you make a fire so the pipes don't freeze. Come on. There should be heat coming off of that. Maybe there is heat coming off. And it's just not enough. Let's see. So it feels like one degree right here. I never really checked it out. It feels like negative 30. Wow, there is heat coming off there. I'm sorry.
I've never actually checked that out before. I just figured since there was no change in up temperature, that there was no heat coming off. I always thought that come it was on, weird that you could get burnt from something that didn't put off heat. I don't feel so good. I need to rest. Okay. Up. And if we add fuel, it'll go out. But uh, we're, before we go to sleep, we're going to get warm first. Okay, because I don't think that if you go to sleep, you get warmed up. And if I uh, go to sleep here, it'll be the next day we won't have warmed up. So let's see, can we just, nope. All right, let's just rest. Uh, see what I just got through saying that. Astrid hasn't come looking for me, which means she can't come looking for me because she's hurt. The reason I ended up clicking on it because I thought that we could have. Uh, I'd better get back up to the crash site. The rest option. So before we get back up to the crash site, there are some things that I wanted to do last night, but I wanted to get warm first. I want to make us some water, if we have a can, that is. I didn't even check. But we still need to finish warming up completely. Well. Yes, we do have a can. Okay. I don't know why Mackenzie was running around with an empty can for, but good thing he was. So it's still just about evening. So he went to sleep last night and woke up, almost slept the entire day away. Let's check and see if we could get anything out of these boxes. I guess I, there's really no need to play this as if you're in survival mode. What did we, did we bring food, right? We took the food option. Oh, maybe it's up in the plane, by the plane. Still smoking up there. Okay, that should be good enough for now. We'll just warm up a little bit here, and then we'll head out. We need to get something to eat so we don't lose one day of well-fed, or, yeah. Let's 
Let me go grab a torch. We don't need all this right now, but they ain't got it. We just got to do stuff like this. It's a good thing it came back because we left our water too. And our can. Man. There used to be a deer here. They moved that. I could probably climb that. Probably. I could eat a horse. Yeah. But you could. We're going to need to take these for part of the story. We're going to 100% this, hopefully. Probably gonna start out pretty slow. No, Shh. I really wish they would adjust those hit boxes for climbing. At least edit it around this rose hip. All right, enough complaining. Just thank God you're alive. Made it. Come on, we need some food, quick. Don't want to have another day before we could get 72 extra pounds of carry weight. My plane. Not sure which of us looks worse. Poor girl. This isn't how things were supposed to end. No, apparently you're waiting for the rust to eat through those supports. I've been looking for you. So, in story mode, if you didn't know, when you pick up something... It automatically puts it on if there's an empty place for it. Hmm. Locked. Very easy to open. And you got plenty of time. In this case, Aspard was ready to die for it. See how it put his coat on and the gloves? Already died for it. Where's our food supply that we brought with this? I guess this was it. That's good, that's good. All right. So long, old girl. Sorry for breaking your windshield when I went through it. She 
should definitely pass through here. And in a hurry. Yeah, she didn't give a fuck about you, did she? Shit. Sorry. You don't like it, then... Well, I don't know what to do. Sometimes I'm going to cuss. I'm not going to censor myself anymore. If you don't like it, then there's other channels to watch. I don't do it often. You could be a big boy or girl and deal with it. Channel isn't for children. Okay, I'm kind of curious how this uh, save is going to work because there's auto saves and um, checkpoints. So it's going to be kind of tricky to get this out on time. Someone's been here recently. Yep. And look, they were kind enough. Have been Astrid. To leave you some wood. I think in the original uh, episode one, Astrid. There we go. Where did you go? I think in the original episode one, you get to. Uh, they had you practice throwing rocks at those rabbits. All right, friends, here we are back again, continuing where we left off in our Winter Mute Story Mode playthrough, Episode 1. We had just crashed and survived the night, and now we're looking for Astrid. It's just getting evening. It looks like a full moon's coming up back there, which is nice. That way we can travel in the dark and still have some vision. Let's go sneak around this wolf over here. And see if we can't make it to grandmother's house or whatever her name is. Whoa. Is that a wolf? I better keep my distance. You better. We only have half health or I would, uh, it'd be tempting to go get that meat, but we don't need to. We're not in survival mode. Whoa, looks like some kind of radio tower. I must be closer to civilization than I thought. Yeah, good for us. I gotta get out of that switch off that survival mode we don't need need this <laughs> but it's so hard
We might need a couple pieces of coal though. I'm concentrating on picking up these uh, rosebuds, hips, rose hips for it's part of a task that we need to do. I think we need to have three cups of those on us. Sitting here, frozen. What the hell? Yeah. What the hell? What are you doing just sitting there frozen? How dare you? Great. A town. Maybe I can find help there. I think we used to be able to just walk right off over there. Ah, it's been a long time. So do we have 36 of these yet? Oh yeah, we got plenty now. We need to get some reishi mushrooms and some more old man's beard. I think we need to make three cups of tea of each rose hips and reishi. And then we need to make three applications of old man's beard. If, Look, smoke from that chimney. I don't see it. Damn, Will. That means someone's home. You got some pretty good eyeballs. Didn't even see the house. Hello? Anyone out there? Doesn't sound like it. What happened here? Him got shot. Him die. <sighs> this whole area looks like it's been abandoned for a while. Look, even the NPCs can't jump over this stuff. You no, know, I should have picked up more of that wood as well. Anybody here? Sneak up on this gray mother and snatch the rifle out of her hand. Boogity, 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 boogity. Hey. Hey, wake up. Holy shit. Uh, wait. Hold your fire. You get back. Okay, okay. Just take it easy. Why are you here? I saw the smoke from your chimney. Outsider. Uh, what? <laughs> Thought so. Mainlander. Outsider. I don't recognize your voice. And you haven't left like the others so must be a mainlander you might point that thing the other way someone who doesn't know any better my plane I, I crashed in the mountains nearby 
I'm looking for someone who crashed with me. A friend. She might be injured. I haven't seen her. Uh, listen, could you maybe point that gun someplace else? You think? Because my eyes are covered, I can't see you. Make the wrong move, say the wrong thing. You'll see how good a shot I am. I don't doubt it. The others are all gone. If you're here, things must be worse than they thought. Who are you? Name's Mackenzie, by the way. And you are? I had a name once. But for years, the townsfolk have called me Grey Mother. A name takes on its own life. Such that at one point, the name becomes the thing it belongs to. Then the old names fade can only be remembered by the young and the true. So, I should call you... You should call me Grey Mother also. Where are we? No, a forgotten town deep in the mountains. You're far from home. But, uh, where are we on Great Bear? My plane came down in a storm, and my compass was acting funny. I've lived here all my life. Not much use for the outside world. Milton's the last of the old mountain towns. Now, it's almost impossible to get to. Or get out of. Only people left here are either too poor or too proud to leave. And which one are you? Which are you? Huh. I have what I need. At least I did before the bad man came. Now I'm not sure I have enough to get through the winter. I need to find my friend, but I'll do what I can to help. My mind is fuzzy. Some things come through so sharp, others. But like a dream. Let me think. Let me rest. Maybe I can pull some memories out of the fog. Maybe I can find something that could help you find your friend. Sitting here with a rifle in your hands. You expecting trouble? Trouble? <laughs> trouble found me. You mean the storm? The bad men. The bad men came, took my things, tried to take my house. They thought they were safe because Grey Mother can't see. <laughs> they were wrong. Who are the bad men? The men, they, they passed through town. The night of the storm, the night of the lights. I'm looking for my friend. She crashed with me when my plane came down in the mountains. Do you think she could have come through and been caught by these bad men? I can't say for sure. Is your friend a survivor? I... Yes. She is. Then there is always hope. The bad men, did they try to hurt you? Everyone thinks being old means you're weak, but they underestimated Grey Mother. It seems they did. I saw your work outside. I crashed without much food or gear myself. And if these bad men cleaned you out, we're going to need to find some food and fuel. Or neither of us is going to make it through the next few days. 
You have any idea where we could find some supplies? The bad man took everything. And the others in town who would have helped me are gone. The ones left will have their own worries. It's up to you, outsider. I'll do what I can, but I'll need your help. There must be somewhere in town to get food, fuel, the essentials. What about your friend? Aren't you in a hurry to find her? Yes, I am. And I'll be looking for signs of her. But there's a lot of ground to cover. And without gear, I won't make it. So while I'm looking for supplies, you see what you can remember about the Night of the Lights and if she might have passed through town. That way, maybe we can help each other. Okay, outsider. Grey Mother can't promise she can unlock the secrets in the dark cupboards of her mind. But she'll try. That's all that we could ask. What really happened here? It seems like people were here recently. Where did they go? Why didn't they call for help or just drive out? The power went out. Who knows the reason? People started to get cold, hungry. They panicked, started to talk crazy. Others walked here from the highway. Some belonged here. Others were outsiders, like you. Did anyone see a woman? Brown hair, would have had a tan jacket, a scarf with, with birds on it. Possibly injured. There was an outsider woman. I heard her pass through. She wasn't alone. There were angry voices and... <sighs> but the storm was too loud. Voices? I lost the voices and I couldn't get them back. Before, you mentioned hearing voices. Do you remember what you heard? The memories are gray, misty. I'm tr trying to remember. It was windy. The blizzard was already waking up. But I heard yelling. A scream. Was it a woman's voice? I'm not sure. The voices were thin, far. The blizzard was waking up soon. There was only wind and darkness. I don't know. I don't remember. It's all cloudy now. The power seems out all over town. The power's always been spotty here since the quakes. No money to fix the broken stuff left behind. And nobody from the mainland seemed to care enough to do anything about it. I'm sure someone will come and fix it. Nobody's coming to save Milton. How can you be so sure? I've learned to hear the difference between something quiet and something abandoned. This goes deeper than just a stillness. It feels like the moments before the world goes to sleep. We're just the last ones left awake to notice it. Yep. I feel you. It's happening right now. The town seems so quiet. Does anyone still live here? Not many. After the earthquakes, less. After last night, even fewer. Where did everyone go? That I cannot say. All I know is that I heard screams and could smell smoke for most of the night. You mentioned smelling smoke? Someone came here. 
One of the townsfolk tried to convince me to leave. They said there were houses burning in the town. They said people were scared and were leaving for the coast <laughs> on foot. Foolish yep. plan. But that's what they said to do after the quakes. If there was ever another emergency, go to the coast and help will come. They wanted me to go with them. But I'm not ready to leave Milton. They left you here? Alone? I'm not alone. I got my rifle. I have my lily. Lily? Never mind. That's what I call my rifle. Okay. Well, any idea how we can get out of this town? I need to find help. The old quake closed down most of the roads in and out of town. That was years ago. Blizzard just swept through town after the power went out. As for help, you won't find any out there. You're on your own. We both are. So tell me, you said the roads were closed because of the quakes several years ago. How were the people coming in from the highway then? Never mind, you don't need to answer. You keep calling me a mainlander. Why? It's what you are, isn't it? From the mainland, an outsider. You don't really belong here. Do you? Okay, but you sound bitter about it. We lost everything in the collapse. People didn't realize how dependent we'd become. Some were fine with it. Others didn't want the scraps from your table. Created deep rifts in families, communities. Scars that never healed. The mainland had become our lifeline, and it was suddenly cut. And so, we suffered. I guess I don't know much about that history. I'm not surprised. You mainlanders have always been focused on your own story. Only interested in Great Bear when it had something to give you. If you can't cut it down or dig it out of the ground, what use is it to you? It's just human nature. So we have to get food for her. She lives here. She told us about the Orca gas station. We already know about this radio tower up there as we went through. Apparently the church is someplace that we need to visit because it's showing it on the map. So the highways are collapsed here. There's a bunch of cars on this bridge. A bear lives here. And the tunnel through here has collapsed. But she just said that the people were streaming in from the highway. And, well, the highway is closed off. So either she's confused or she's living in the past. And the only thing new was the voices and the people that showed up. But apparently there was a recent earthquake that closed this off also because there's a, a police bus here, a prison bus, that's collapsed under the mountain. And we saw the prisoner that was in her shed back here. He had to come off that prison bus and that hadn't been there for years. Or else, for certain, they wouldn't still be wearing their prison uniform. And, well, there's a lot of things that we need to figure out. So, she might be uh, conflating a couple memories in her head. So, she didn't mention anything about an earthquake, but that's the only thing that explains it. Except for the one years ago. All right. 
We need to make it to the Orca gas station. We need to get her food and wood for her to survive. And we need to loot her place if we can of anything useful. And I don't think there is anything until later. Or maybe I'm misremembering. Oh, there it is. I don't think we're going to be really relying on that too much as far as Um, reading and getting our skills up that way. I mean, we are going to use the sewing kit, that's for certain. We're going to need to repair a bunch of our stuff that we find. We need to get her food and stick it in the freezer or the fridge. We need 8,000 calories. Yeah, we'll get that when uh, we get the, we'll kill a couple wolves, I guess, for her. We're going to need to rest. It is the nighttime, so before we go out, we're going to rest. Is this her room? Yeah, that looks like her room. Don't want to sleep in her bed. We'll sleep in their Lily's bed. I want to make sure that we get the well-fed bonus, so we'll eat all this light stuff. It shouldn't be too hard to fulfill her needs, and I think as soon as we do, we'll it'll open up. We won't be so constrained to just the story. We'll be able to do a little exploring on our own. Which I, I think that's one of the things that was driving in, in my mind when uh, we were coming up here. I wanted to collect a bunch of wood and I wanted to collect all the cattail stalks because I think that I knew we needed that. Even though I might not have remembered it subconsciously. Uh, all right. Here we are once again at the end of another video and I'll see you in the next one.